<laughs> hey, I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Welcome to the news and why it matters. Glenn, what was the top story for you? Uh, well, I'm going to kind of build on something I think that Andrew talked about a couple of weeks ago. Remember, he was talking about the, the scientist who came out and said, hey, I can make a designer baby in yes, China. Yeah, from China. That was, you nailed that impression of Thank Dr. He. That was right? spot on, Dr. Now say he. that. Say that. You're going to say it first, and then I'll say it. Hey, I designed a designer baby. I made it. Uh, I've designed a designer baby. That's my I've designed a designer baby. You can't tell us apart. It's crazy. It's true. We, I am the rich little of radio. Anyway, which nobody knows. <laughs> um, so uh, there's an update on the scientist, and I think it just will warm your heart. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. All right, Jason. The CIA briefed the Senate, or a select few senators, on the Khashoggi thing and whether uh, Mohammed bin Salman was culpable in it. Um, and it's pretty eye-opening, but will it change anything? All right, Andrew. Uh, I know that most viewers like me like to unwind by reading white papers from think tanks. And so <laughs> I, uh, I am going to defang a, a study that came out from the Center for Immigration Studies uh, earlier this week. Oh, that is fantastic. I just have to pour myself a good glass of milk and then I'm, <laughs> yep. I'm ready. Settling for this one, guys. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a good tale. All right, before we get into all of that, I want to thank our sponsor, Rigazone. Um, so it's, uh, again, the holiday time. Okay, I think of this every time we do this, so I'm just going to say it because I was going to say it off the air and I never remember to say it. What? I want to try that. Do you? Yeah, I do. Okay. I want to try it because okay. I am just fat as a house and there's nothing I can do about it. No, I am. I am. Not a big house, not like a mansion, but like, like, an a, like, like an Airstream trailer. Like, like, like a very svelte, <laughs> like well-designed Airstream bigger than trailer. Maybe a Winnebago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But not a house house. No, it really does. It, it works. And for those of you who haven't heard, um, it's, the, it's natural. It's the good molecule in olive oil. Uh, the one that helps boost metabolism, make you feel full longer, um, and, and that's what it is. That's all that it is, and they put it in a capsule, and you take it before your meal, and I, I take it, uh, this is former fat girl speaking, I take it, uh, I lost all the weight, and I still had problems with cravings. So this is, I, I swear by it, this is the real deal if you are looking to lose weight or you just want to maintain over the holidays. Give this a shot. It's ridizone.com. That's R I D U Z O N E.com. Use promo code The Blaze and get 30% off of a three month supply. We did the math for you. It's $1.39 a day. You have that much to invest in your health. You spend more at Starbucks. So go to ridizone.com. Get your health back. Glenn. So I started the radio show today with uh, a story out of the UK. And. Uh, the UK is really starting to become frightening, a little terrifying with the things that you can and cannot do and the, um, the uh, 1984 kind of atmosphere that is now being built in the UK. We've gone from, oh, this is you know, the most security cameras in the world, there's no big deal, or you're just going to watch it. No, it's, it's completely changing now, and it's starting to become a little spooky. We have China, of course, and I'm looking into China, and I remember the story that, um, uh, that Andrew brought last week where he talked about this scientist who came out and said, hey, I've, I've taken this genetic material, was it even an embryo? It was embryos, yes. They're, okay. they're viable embryos that have, that have since come to term and are now uh, uh, babies, allegedly. They've okay. been born. And he said, I, I went in and I edited the gene using CRISPR, and I've, I've come in and I edited the gene, so they're, they're, they're kind of more resistant to getting the AIDS virus. And we talked about that, and we wondered or not if that was true. It was actually a really great conversation. It was. It was a really yeah. brilliant conversation. And uh, we wondered if that was true. Well, I'm here to tell you I think it was, Andrew, because after he gave that speech, he disappeared. Uh, and uh, the, the Chinese say, oh, we definitely don't have him in custody. <laughs> now, I don't know, maybe, I mean, maybe, uh, you know, maybe the Saudis put him in a blender. I'm <laughs> not sure where he is. Uh, but he disappeared in China? Yeah. You can't walk out the front door without being on a CCTV camera. Well, they're looking for him. Oh, oh, my God. Yes, they he had, spoke at a conference, right? Yeah, he spoke at a conference, and he said that he had done this, and then he disappeared. Nobody's heard from him since and, that and conference. And he violated, I don't know if it's law, but there was some agreement that China is, is part and privy to that, that forbids um, human enhancement without certain conditions or whatever, and he, he violated without that. Without them saying yes. Uh, yes, exactly. Well, that's the thing is I, I do think, um, we, we were talking on the radio show that uh, Glenn graciously invited me on earlier today. And um, 
you know, the, there's they all the, make mistakes. There's <laughs> the American dream, which is you know everybody gets a shot and can can rise up and all that kind of stuff. The China dream is China is awesome. You need to be on board with that. And uh, I, you know, I, I think they're probably going to push the envelope on this. I think right now they're they're uh, you know don't do that. But uh, ten years from now, I can see designer babies being very much a part of. Uh, cool. Seen, skip over there. Seen the movie Gattaca? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I don't know if that's what you guys talked about this, but I, I could definitely see this being like the next stage in discrimination, like hardcore. You know, like, oh, you haven't been edited with that, you know, this ADHD or whatever of out, course. or yeah. you weren't given that little boost and, you know, of stamina course. or you whatever. The awesome things I plan to do with my kids. I want to give them uh, taste buds all the way down their throat. That way they can taste the food longer. Oh, man, I want that now. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> know, didn't that sound good? That was, that was, that was something I thought. Oh, wait a minute, I'll take that in answer. Yeah, you guys are a mess. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, that's not bad. I said you should go all the way to the stomach. Mm. So then you could just keep tasting it. That why would be pretty Why nice. stop there, really? <laughs> well, because that would be crazy. <laughs> again, right? I don't want to taste it as it's coming out of the other side. So, so tell us why this story matters. Uh, because the world has uh, is turning a blind eye to... 1984 to Brave New World to Gattaca to the island to all these movies that we all said oh wouldn't that be crazy well yeah and it's here and it's happening and nobody's talking about it uh, do you think that some of it has to do with the news coverage that people are watching because I feel like they turn on you know their regular news network and yeah, they're no, not is, seeing stuff this like is this holy and and this is where I will agree with Donald Trump but not in the way he means it you know, he says the, you know, the press is the enemy of the people. No, it's not. Um, but the, the press is responsible uh, for a lot of the ignorance that is happening. I mean, news ignorance. Yeah. Uh, because they're focusing on... I, I, just did a, I just did a special for the new year uh, for ABC. And I, I don't know when it runs. I think it runs, you know, before Ryan Seacrest or something. And they, they talked about all the deals, you know, that happened in the world this year. And so they're just asking me all these questions and stuff. I spent two hours with them, <clears throat> constant questions, and I bet an hour and 15 were all about Trump. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, at one point they said, so, you know, what is Donald Trump's responsibility here for? And I said, what's the media's responsibility? Is two takes, it takes two to tango. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that um, the press is going to have a rude awakening, and they already are in, <clears throat> in Europe. They just haven't figured out that it was them. And I remember in 2008, 2009, <clears throat> got a lot of heat because I was trying to explain to the press what you're doing. And I said, at some point, and me included, because I'm sitting in this chair... They're going to come through that door, and they're going to drag you out in the streets, and they're going to beat you within an inch of life. And it won't matter if you were good or bad, because the whole media is going to be the enemy of the people. And look where we are. Look where we're headed. Yeah. They've got to wise up. The 1984 stuff actually does scare me. It always sounds like hyperbole when you, when you say that, you make that claim. But, I mean, UK, it really is going in that direction. Um, I heard you talking about that this morning on radio. The, the stuff I remember when they were, remember the, the baby that was, that they were going to euthanize yeah. over there, the protests that, uh, or, I, I missed that. What happened with? He, he had some kind of, some kind of brain. Charlie uh, Gard? Char was it Charlie Gard? No, or it was, was the second one. There was, yeah, oh, there was the second one. I can't remember, but, but there were the two babies that happened this in, the, in 2017 that um, the doctors said there's no hope, you know, under the socialized medicine deal, there's no hope. We shouldn't spend any money on it. Uh, and so let them die. And the parents both had other doctors, other hospitals, fully paid for different countries. Oh, the Vatican helicopter yeah. was, was waiting. spinning up on the helipad, waiting for them to so, deliver. So, so the parents weren't on board with this? No, the, the parents, parents were. The parents wanted to do what they could to try to save the baby. That's what life. I mean. They, they, yeah. they were not for euthanasia. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. And the, but the government of Great Britain said, uh, no, sorry, there's no chance. And they're like, but it's not going to cost you anything. You just take him and put him in the helicopter, and we're going to go with him. We're going to the Vatican. Nope. W what do you mean, no? And they did it to prove a point that we have control over yeah. the life and death decisions. We can't make exceptions like this. And it was really terrifying, but more so with the protesters. Yeah, the protest. So the protest. There were protests. There were peaceful protests. They were not violent. But the but the UK police in that area.
put out this message saying that if you put anything on social media, Facebook, whatever, we will be monitoring it. So if it's anything counter that we deem could be inciting these protests, then we will come and arrest you. Yeah, they, <laughs> the, the United Kingdom doesn't have enshrined freedom of speech laws the way we do. But Even, you know what? I don't think, we, I don't think that's going to matter soon. Did you see the story today about Microsoft, how they have agreed to give a backdoor and turn over all technology to the Pentagon? Wow. Anything they do, all technology to the United States government. Excuse me? Wow. Okay, well, wow. fine. Yeah. Clear my browser. And, uh, and, and, and back in a minute. And all, and all big tech companies now, uh, the Google thing with, with how they're bending to the will of the Chinese and helping them censor their own people. Apple CEO Tim Cook just gave that, just gave that speech Terrifying. where he said, he said it's our duty to, to basically de-platform based off our own sin. judgment. Sin. It's a sin. It's a sin. And then Tim Cook was just, I think, a few months ago, was just in China. And he was speaking in front of a big forum. And he, he told them, he said, that our vision of how the internet should be is exactly your vision of the, how the internet should be. We are we are complete agreement. So basically, full control, full censorship. How can you say that? That's what they feel. I mean, that, that they are setting themselves up for it. I'm not, the UK. They can't do anything. Their citizens can't do anything about it. Has anybody read Yal uh, Havari's uh, book, uh, Twenty One Questions for the Twenty First Century? No. You should read it. it was, it's a New York Times bestseller, you know, number one for a long, long time. Um, uh, Yuval Harari is, is a guy who is very popular with the elite class. So anybody who's anybody has read him. Barack Obama used to, you know, be seen reading his books. And, uh, um, and so he is, he's an important voice if you want to understand how uh, the elites are viewing things. And I am telling you, you read that book, it is terrifying the way he looks at freedom, the way he looks at capitalism and the future. It is truly terrifying. I'm reading it going, wait, 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 what? That's not, no, that's not a good idea. And this is, it's, it's, it's what the elite consumes. This is what the kind of stuff in that book are the kinds of things that you would hear at a cocktail party at you know, the upper levels of government, the upper, level, upper levels of tech, the upper levels of the ruling class and media in New York. Mm. Uh, Jason, before we get to your Saudi Arabia update, let's go ahead and take a break. We'll be back. Put them on blend or liquid? Both. We're talking about all of these things happening internationally. Um, it's only a matter of time before something happens with the government and we're forced to, I don't know, like get in our cars and go off the grid, maybe find that wherever Glenn's bunker is. That's a little <laughs> disturbing. I think it would be much it's, more it's likely the, to stay a snowstorm is coming. opulent <laughs> bunker that I believe Glenn lives in. Correct. Uh, Correct. <laughs> and Andrew, have you gotten your My Patriot supply yet? I don't know, but I plan to. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I tell you why? Perfect for preppers. In, like in addition to having a prepper, uh, being from Oklahoma, in a state that is routinely ravaged by tornadoes, uh, I, I don't think, th I'm not that worried about things, but when something bad happens, and it will, 
I want to be able to go help my neighbors. And I think there's a lot of people like me yes. mm -hmm. who um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to go to the hills. I'm going to go help out, but I need to be able to take care of myself to do that. And yes. so I, I think that's a responsible thing on a civic level, and I do plan to get some. Can and I, can I ask you, I'm sorry, can I ask you why do people live in, like, Moore, Oklahoma? It's hit yeah. like No, no, God. God hates Moore, Oklahoma. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's like, uh, you know what? That's where the snake crawled out from the tree. Yeah, <laughs> there, well, there, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, tornadoes eat trailer homes. That's how that works. They, yeah, they yeah, feed off that. of that. They yeah. breed off of that. Um, I, I think because more, it must be cheaper to live in. I don't know. And it's, <laughs> yeah, I would it's imagine. Kind of, it's kind Until of like a, a, a suburb of South <laughs> Oklahoma City. Uh, but yeah. Crazy. But you don't have to be a prepper uh, to know that you need a, at least a couple weeks of emergency food supply just in case. You never know what's going to happen. You can go to preparewithnews.com. Get delicious breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Two weeks of it for $75. That's a steal. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Everyone should have a couple weeks. Preparewithnews.com. Get it there. Jason, here's the update. On so the CIA director uh, briefed the Senate today. It was a small group of senators, not the entire Senate, but she, uh, she, she briefed them today, and she told them what, you know, what the culpability was of Mohammed bin Salman, and the crown prince, uh, if he knew or directed or whatever the, uh, the assassination on Khashoggi. And I think this is pretty much one of those no-duh things that everyone already knows. You know, the question is if that's like what the, what the president tweeted, there was no smoking gun. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like, yeah, there was no smoking gun. There was probably a whole lot of smoking knives uh, that they were involved dirty in. Dirty blender? Uh, th blender? Probably that, too. I, yeah. it's, it, it's, it, the details have not come out, but many senators are saying, like, we, we pretty much already knew this, but now we definitely know this. Uh, I think it was uh, Corker that said that... Um, uh, that if he was in front of a judge, if he went to court, he would have been, been convicted within 30 minutes. Like, that's how strong the evidence is. And it, it, this is, it, it's, it's awful. Uh, what happened to him is awful, but nothing is going to change from this. And every single senator that's talking about it right now, um, and many of them are even virtue signaling uh, off of this, but I'm not saying what they're saying is wrong, like this is bad, but every single one of them knows that nothing will change. Nothing will change without the Saudis, without the other Gulf uh, kingdoms. If you want to push back in Iran, you can't do that without them. And that is like one of their like major geopolitical things that they're doing right now in the area is pushing back Iran. And I happen to kind of agree with that. I, I, I think we do. I, uh, I want to push back on the Iranians. I want to stop them from doing what they're doing. I hate the Saudis, but geopolitics is cold. It's real. It's pragmatic. There is no change going to come from this. Why, no. why do you prefer the Saudi government over the Iranian government? The Saudi, the Iranian government, in my mind, is just, it, the Saudi government, in my mind, is just more easy to control. So, like, the Saudi government's got... They're greedy. They're, they're, they're very greedy. They also have about 10 citizens in their country. Um, but most people don't know this, but there is, really, there's, like, two or three cities within yeah, Saudi it, Arabia. It looks really big, but it's actually pretty A bunch close. of desert. Yeah. Iran is a very more well-developed country. Tons more people. T uh, you know, a, a lot more geographically, you know, uh, it's easier for them to, th to thrive and, and, and to project their power. It's a lot harder on the Saudis. So the Saudis will always do their, you know, jihadist terrorist games and they'll export terrorism uh, as, uh, as they have been. But Iran has the ability to be a nation state that can actually take over countries one by one. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm just kind of like, why don't we sit out and eat popcorn? And just like, like I don't, we don't, we don't need the oil anymore, right? So like, why are we there? So but we do still need the oil. Like, as it, like this is another but thing. It, but it's fungible. They're still going to export it anyway, right? Uh, the, the Saudis? Yeah. Um, but, okay, so they can't, they, can't, they can't export their oil via waterways if we just let Iran, let's say, take over Yemen. Like, a lot of people say, why is the Yemen war? Why are we involved in that? I hate the Yemen war. I, I, hate, I hate that we're doing it. But Iran is the reason why this war is happening. Uh, if we let, if we just completely step back and we let the uh, Iran take Yemen, they now control both of the largest uh, waterways for oil probably in the world. So the Persian Gulf and the Bob, Bob, and Bob Endel Strait. I can never say that word, but that's the that goes up to the Red Sea, that goes up to you know to Europe and into the Mediterranean. You hand them two of the largest uh, sea. They cripple everything. Uh, they completely cripple. You could you could almost crash the world economy if they say, okay, fine, we're shutting this per, uh, port down, we're shutting this port down, done. I think you also... That's, that's the ramification. I think you also almost cripple the world economy if you piss Saudi Arabia off so much that they say, all right, our sovereign funds are out. Um, you know, the people, people don't understand. I have a friend who was, was with... Uh, who's the crazy-ass prince that was, you know, over here offered money to uh, Rudy Giuliani, and Giuliani said, we don't want your blood money. Remember him? 
he's one of the Saudi princes. He was... Was it Bin Talal or...? Nah, I don't remember. But he, it, it's the one you would know. He owned part of Fox. And it's Bin Talal. Okay. So um, a friend of ours went over and uh, went over to try to beg him for loans to keep our banks afloat in 2008. And uh, he said, I'm, I'm sitting there, and he said, like clockwork, every 10 minutes this man changes his sunglasses. <laughs> and somebody comes up with a silver tray with a new pair, and he said, we're in the middle of talking, and he takes that pair off, puts another pair on, and you just keep talking like nothing's wrong. He said, they're just, they're nuts, <laughs> but they saved us after 2008. You know, they, they, their sovereign funds and their investment, if we piss them off, and that's the thing that worries me, and I think stock market showed that it was a little concerned today, too. We don't want to piss off China. You don't want to piss off the Saudi Arabians. I don't want to be in bed with them, but I don't want any enemies either. Okay, now I'm fine with that. I would be, I would be fine with a benign neutrality mm -hmm. with, with Saudi Arabia, but I don't want to be arming them. I don't want to give them any logistical support. Um, I don't want to be giving them financial support and, and prosecuting the war in Yemen. Uh, and an overall, what I want to do is just slowly back away from that whole thing. I would love it too. It's just it's easier said than done. And you know, like if we abandon the Gulf Kingdoms, uh, let's say the war in Yemen, and again, I hate it. But if we abandon them, you basically, ha like I said, you hand the country to Iran. They're going to take it. If we and, and that's, if we slowly, that's handing it to either Russia or China. And then what happens? And again, if we continue to step back, they take Iraq, which they've pretty much already done anyway, and they're one step closer to Israel. Israel's gone. If if we abandon, if we do not stand up to Iran, Israel's gone. They're toast. Um, doesn't, doesn't Israel kind of have like secret nukes in their arsenal? I mean, isn't that a part of their defense strategy? Yeah, they're not I, even I secret anymore. So I, I don't think that a nuclear armed Israel would really be under you know constant threat from Iran in that capacity because mutually assured destruction would still apply, right? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Israel would shoot nukes if they were facing an invasion. I, I, I just highly doubt it. I, I don't think anyone will ever use a nuke again, personally. Okay. Mm -hmm. I hope um, not. All right. Back, back in a minute. Civilization. Right. A crazy 12-er? Yeah. 12-er? Pre-Islam. Andrew, defang that uh, CIS report, if you will. I have very good news for everybody. Uh, if you looked at the CIS, that's the Center for Immigration Studies report that came out yesterday, the headline was that 63% of all immigrant households are on some form of welfare, which mm -hmm. is a very attention-grabbing headline and implies that immigrants are going to be a, a sucking Great. force on the economy. Yeah. Um, I read through it, and there were two glaring problems with it that should make you give serious pause to uh, walking away with that particular conclusion. The first one is 
they only wanted to use households, which is an odd choice. Um, welfare is not given by households in any form. Welfare is given by, by individual um, means-tested things, most of which are not available to immigrants. Um, the, the few things that are available to immigrants are available maybe on a state level where, like, California will have lunches available to kids in school. It's, it's very minimal. Um, but they did it by household and not by individual, and the reason for that is to torture the numbers in order to make it look like immigrants suck up more welfare than Americans do, which is not the case. When you look at actual individual level welfare recipients, Americans are much more likely to be on welfare than immigrants are. Um, and the way they, they've set that up is um, if, if one person in your household is on some form of welfare, then that is an, uh, a welfare household now, right? So if I've got eight people in my household, which I might, then I now have a, a welfare household. As opposed to if we did it on an individual level, in which case this whole thing doesn't really have that much potency to it. The other thing that is worth pointing out is I, I read through the report and I didn't see a single dollar figure anywhere in it. It was only percentages. They would just say like, ah, oh, you know, X amount of, of households are on some kind of welfare. Oh, well, that doesn't tell me anything because if it's like, you know, we're spending $30 on a sack lunch for a family as opposed to the actual, you know, uh, welfare that is going to an American citizen or whatever, those are the numbers that I'm more concerned with. So I, I thought that was kind of a flash in a pan and uh, really did not have any um, empirical force behind it. It was just looking to scare people about immigrants. So don't pay attention to that report. Mm, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I did also see, though, in the report, I want to get your, your thoughts on this, that um, of the immigrants that they surveyed, mm -hmm. of, of those immigrants in those welfare households, that I believe it said half of them were illegal? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it, it could be. I mean... The, the, the thing for me would be that... that, that it, I'm pretty sure that that's what it, that it was half, which to me is just troubling. Uh, again, it would depend for me on the amount of money going to him and what the kind of thing was, um, because I think like for illegal immigrants, the, the vast majority of... I mean, to, to get um, any type of benefit in the United States that's, that's federal is very difficult. Uh, even if you're a legal immigrant, there's usually a 10-year moratorium on it. Um, there's all sorts of things that you need to have to qualify for it. So it's not like that's a magnet for immigrants. Mm -hmm. um, there are things like emergency Medicaid services. If, you're, if you go to an emergency room mm -hmm. or something, that would, I assume, be considered a form of welfare under that survey. Um, so I, I, I think most of that stuff um, doesn't really have any impact behind it unless they're actually giving you dollar figures and things like that. It was, it was a pretty... A, a, a pretty um, manicured way of trying to distort data into saying something that we don't actually know. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Yeah. How can we decide anything in our country if we can't have accurate data? Yeah. Uh, for those of you who are either listening on podcast or watching on cable, don't forget, we are the new Blaze TV. You can go there, start your free trial. Glenn, we have a promo code. Is it Beck yes, Christmas? Yes, Beck Christmas. You save 20 bucks off your subscription, Beck Christmas. We have got some huge names. So, so excited. Uh, check it out, blazetv.com. And we are coming at you in overtime here in a minute.